द गोल्डन एज गुप्ता एम्पायर इंडिया इन द टाइम ऑफ द गुप्ताज गुप्ता एम्पायर सोर्सेज ऑफ हिस्ट्री आफ्टर द डिक्लाइन ऑफ मॉडर्न एम्पायर टू लार्ज पोलिटिकल एंटिटीज द कुशानाज एंड द सतावाहनाज इमर्ज इन नॉर्थ इंडिया एंड डेकिन रिस्पेक्टिवली both the kingdoms declined around the middle of the 3rd century ce prior to that in the middle of the 4th century ce a new empire arose in the ganga valley which had control over a large part of india it was gupta empire which left a deep cultural impact not only on the subcontinent but also on the adjacent ancient countries as well we get information about this dynasty from the inscriptions coins monuments and literary evidences the rock cut temples of ajanta brick temples in kanpur deogarh and jhansi give us good insights of guptas the account of chinese pilgrim fa hain gives us a vivid description of the period abhijan shakuntalam and meghdoot written by kalidasa provide a glimpse about the socio economic conditions prevailing in the period fact samudra gupta the great is known through coins issued by him these were of eight different types and all made of pure gold several coins depict him playing on the indian ayur or veena the golden age the guptas The Guptas rose to prominence in 320 CE by taking over the area which were under the control of the Kushanas and the Satvahanas. They dominated the history of India for the next 2 centuries. India made remarkable progress under them in all the fields: social, political, art, architecture, science, literature, etc. Hence their age is regarded as the golden age. from 320 to 540 ce they ruled over india with patliputra as their capital chandragupta 1 320 to 335 ce he was the first important ruler of this dynasty initially he had control only over magadh but he extended his empire by matrimonial alliance and conquests he married the lichavi princess Kumara Devi and gained in prestige he further extended his empire by conquering the neighboring states like Kot Tirhut Bihar and Allahabad he assumed the title of Maharaja Adhiraj king of kings he was succeeded by his son Samudragupta 335 to 375 CE Samudragupta 335 to 375 CE Samudra Gupta followed a policy of conquest and expansion and has rightly been called the Napoleon of India In northern India he defeated the Naga kings of Mathura Gwalior and Abhichhatra and rulers of Kota In central India he subjugated the forest tribes He also received tributes from the five frontier states Samtata Bengal, Devaka, North Assam, Kamrup, Assam, Nepal, and Kartarpur, Tarai region. In south, he defeated a number of powerful rulers and accepted tributes from them. His empire extended from River Brahmaputra in the east to River Yamuna and Chambal in the west, and from the Himalayas in the north to the Narmada in the south. Chandragupta II and Kumaragupta gold coin He revived the custom of Ashwamedha to assert his political supremacy he issued coins on that occasion he assumed the title of Maharaj Adhiraja the most authentic source of information about Samudragupta's reign is the Allahabad Pillar inscription which was composed by poet Hari Sena in which he speaks of samudra gupta's conquest and military exploits the inscription is in sanskrit language he was a follower of hinduism but was tolerant towards other religions 
as he permitted the king of Sri Lanka, Meghavarman, to construct a Buddhist temple at Gaya. From the coins of his period, we come to know that he was a great musician and an expert player of Veena. His court had a galaxy of learned men. He himself was an accomplished scholar and a poet of high order. This great empire builder was held in high esteem by his people. Chandragupta II, 375 to 414 CE. He was the son and successor of Samudragupta. He, like his father, was a great conqueror and an able ruler. He extended the Gupta Empire up to the Arabian Sea by defeating the Saka kings of Malwa, Gujarat, and Konkan coast. This brought the ports of Borj Kambay and Sopara under his control and it gained him the title of Sakari, destroyer of the Sakas. He further strengthened his position by entering into marriage alliance with the Nagas by marrying princess Kuber Naga. He married her own daughter to the Vakataka, king of Deccan. Chandragupta II, also known as Vikramaditya, was a great patron of art and literature. The Navaratnas or the Nine Gems which included the famous poet Kalidasa are associated with his reign. Fahim also visited India during this period. He described Chandragupta as a wise, just and benevolent ruler. After the death of Chandragupta II, his son Kumaragupta ascended the throne. His achievement lay in the fact that he kept the empire of his forefathers intact and people were happy and prosperous in his reign. Kumaragupta was succeeded by his son Skandagupta who had to face the attack of the Hunas, the cruel and barbaric tribe of Central Asia. They were defeated by Skandagupta but after his death, the Hunas attacked again. The later Guptas were too weak to check the Hunas. The Hunas occupied Punjab and Kashmir. They destroyed the towns, massacred the people. Their invasions hastened the decline of the glorious rule of the Guptas. Fact Buddhist University of Nalanda had an impressive 30,000 students was founded in the Indian Golden Age.